Welcome to another review of two more modern classics, this time two Triumphs. And thank you for Triumph UK for lending us these bikes to try out on the channel. So myself and Dave will have these for about a week each and see how we get on with them. First of all, we've got the Scrambler 1200 XC and then we've got the Speed Swim. Now, both of them, I have to say, visually, they look very nice. Um, Speed Twin retains that classic Triumph layout, vertical twin cylinder, classic proportions on the tank, but dressed in a very modern way. But I like the clean and simple lines of this. I think it's quite understated, um, but it's a good looking bike. This, again, it's a pretty good looking bike, but it's not understated, particularly with those huge swept exhaust, two into two exhausts that we've got on there, reminiscent of some of the um, desert sleds or scramblers from the 60s Bonnevilles that we've seen on some of the other videos. But again, it's a good looking bike. This one in particular is, is the Gold Line edition. So it's got these fantastic details on the tank, hand painted pinstripes, this stainless steel strap over the top, and it's nicely finished. They both share the same engine, 1200cc high torque uh, liquid cooled engine made to look like it's air-cooled, like on the other Bonnevilles uh, that we've tested in the past. This particular one output is around 90 PS. This one has a little bit more, it's the full 100 PS version. Now, we've tested the Bobber Speedmaster and the T120 in the past. They both feature the same engine, but with 80 PS, and they allow for quite a smooth and sedate ride. This one, you can feel the extra power on it for sure. When I took this out, you can feel it got that extra grunt. There are five full modes to choose from. Uh, it was wet when I took it out, so I did have it on rain mode, but it still went really well, and the throttle response was pretty rapid. It's, it's ride by wire, and I did find that a little bit tricky for a start off because it seemed quite sensitive compared to all the classic bikes that I normally ride. And I did find the fueling on this one a little bit um, twitchy, should we say, at low speeds. This one seemed far smoother. I don't know why, it just was. It was just easier uh, and smoother on the uptake. To be honest, I wasn't a fan of this when I was out on the road on it. I found it quite tall, which it obviously is, but also it felt a little bit cumbersome uh, around some of the windy lanes compared to some of the bikes I normally ride. Now, it rode the bumps really well. It's got very high spec, fully adjustable front shocks and Olin's fully adjustable rear. The Speed Twin, it's lower grade. This has got sort of Triumph standard uh, shocks on the back, which you can only change for preload. Uh, and the front shocks, again, they aren't adjustable at all. So more simple uh, setup compared to this, but I suppose this one, you can take it off-road as well. So it gives you that extra uh, adjustability and quality that you need if you're riding over the bumpy stuff. Riding it around the country lanes, it was very comfortable. The riding position itself with the bars was great. It just felt a little bit big when you were going slower speeds, something that I wasn't used to on the short time that I had it, but I'm sure you could get the hang of it pretty quick. Riding it through town, and it was fair enough, but I got stuck in quite a bit of traffic. And one thing I did notice, which I suppose is pretty obvious, the inside of my right leg was getting pretty warm because when I was sat on it at various points, there's loads of roadworks in town at the moment, foot on the brake, just hold it there, my leg was really, or the calf, really tucked in against these pipes. And after about five or 10 minutes going through town, I could really feel the heat coming through there a little bit. And it wasn't uncomfortable, just a bit annoying. And I suppose maybe you'd get used to it after a while, but again, it's just a, a small point really. Overall, it is a good bike, but not really my cup of tea compared to the Speed Twin. Now that I thoroughly enjoyed. First of all, I prefer the more understated looks of this bike. It feels really comfortable when you're out riding. The setup of the suspension was spot on and I was just going steady for a start off. Um, what I did find was that it's got so much torque that you could actually ride it a little bit more like you would a, a V-twin cruiser almost. You could go around very slow, tight corners at sort of 15 to 20 miles an hour and still be in third gear, not have to drop down. It would just pull away smoothly from those really low sort of 1400 revs in third, no problem. I found that really, really 
relaxing and comfortable. Then if you flick it to sport mode, get the revs way above sort of 4,000 and more, you feel that second wave of power come in and it goes like absolute, well, unbelievably well. Uh, too good for me to be honest, so I had to sort of calm down a little bit, but it's the first 50 horsepower you can use and just cruise around nicely, country lanes or through town, but you really open it up above 4,000, you feel that second half of the power band come in and it, it transforms into a different bike. It's a proper naked sports bike. Really, really impressed with it. Nice, clear analog dials. They were dead easy to use and really familiar. Also, this one's just got a standard ignition. This one's got some fancy transponder in here and it took me a while to get the hang of using it. I still don't quite know how to work that. So again, that was a bit of a faff and a little bit annoying. This, dead simple. Dial's dead clear. The modes do work. So there's just three modes on this bike, uh, road, rain, or sport. Uh, I took it out in the wet, used it in rain. It just softens it off and changes the traction control settings a bit. But in standard road mode, it did everything I needed it to do. I was really, really impressed with it. Very comfortable riding position, very familiar indeed. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed this bike. Another thing about this bike, um, even more so than the Scrambler, the Speed Twin, the sound of it and the exhaust note when you're going along. The 270 degree crank on these gives a really uh, unique sound to the Triumphs. Sounds more like a V twin in some ways. Um, but yeah, nice, enjoyable sound, not too loud, but you can feel the pulses. So, what are the negatives? Well, on this one, for me, the design, these high swept pipes, they just look too fussy for me. They're a bit big at the back, they've got all these different heat shields on, and it just starts to get a bit, a bit messy in there, particularly compared to how neat and simple this is. Um, the ride height as well. I'm nearly six foot, but I found it a little bit strange and I wasn't that comfortable on it in slow traffic. That's going to put some people off. And the price compared to this, it's £2,000 more. I know the shocks are better, but when you're riding on the road, you don't really feel the benefit of those, or I didn't when compared to this. So for an additional two grand, I didn't think I was getting that much more bike when compared to this one. And this one, Negatives on this, well, the mud guards riding in the wet front and rear were pretty useless, to be honest. It is completely covered. My back got covered as well, um, which is disappointing because they are nice. I mean, they're lovely looking sort of brushed alloy front and rear, but yeah, they don't really perform much of a job in the wet. So that's a bit annoying. Um, other features that are a bit this. So, on the header pipes there, I don't know if these are stainless or what they're finished in, they're brushed, they look lovely down here, but when you get back up here, they're sort of tarnished. This bike's a year old actually, it's been on the road, it's done four and a half thousand uh, miles, and it's tarnished up here and it kind of looks, not rusty, but old, and it's a bit, again, a little bit annoying, it sort of lets it down a little bit. Um, again, how that would work in a, if it went through a full winter, I don't know, but overall the quality and finish is very, very good. Uh, the paintwork's excellent. Lots of nice touches of these brushed aluminium or alloy parts. These false uh, carburetor bodies there. The cap, filler cap looks great in that alloy as well. So the finish is very, very nice. Um, the seat again as well is well upholstered. Looks great. Probably good for about an hour. I wouldn't want to be on it any longer. It's not as comfortable as the T120 seat. But, like I said before, it's a thousand pound less than the T120. And you get, for me, two bikes in one with this. So one other annoying thing about <coughs> the Scrambler is starting it up. Now, I know how to do it now, but I didn't. It took me about five minutes to work it out. It's got like a car key on it, this one. You have to press the button in the middle. You get a green flashing light on the key. Then you have to fiddle around with the start-stop switch here. Switch it on, it's like booting up or starting a computer. So the TFT screen comes up, good evening rider it says. Flashing lights, rev counter appears. And now it starts up. Switch it off, 
we'll switch it off again. It really is, like I say, it's like switching on an iPad, um, which is a little bit alien to me, having ridden just classic bikes. This one, not a problem. Key in, turn it on once, hear the injectors, and it's just... Start it up, no problem, no faffing around. That's another reason why I prefer this bike. Thinking about other modern classics that we've tested, the top of the class for me was the Royal Enfield Interceptor. Not only is it fantastic value for money, it felt like a classic, looked like a classic, but had the reliability and the reassurance that it was a modern bike, start on the button and it's gonna get you where you need to go. Only 50 brake horsepower, but it used that really well. Like I said, this does exactly the same. So up to that 50 horsepower, you can ride it sedately, really comfortably, and in a relaxed way, like you would on a sort of 70s classic bike. But then, open the throttle a bit more, get the revs up, and this becomes a proper modern sports bike as well. So it is two bikes in one. So for me, at what, just over 11,000 pounds, it comes in a full thousand pound cheaper than the T120 Bonneville, which has got less power and is less usable as a fast ride road sports bike than this one is. So I think it's better than the T120 Bonneville and I also think it's better than the Interceptor because it gives you that bit more. So if I had the budget to go over 11,000, this is the bike that I would choose as the, the modern bike to have in my garage. So today we've got two Triumphs in the workshop. Now they've both been out. I'm going to concentrate on this one first. I was given the chance to ride this um, Triumph Speed Twin 1200. Uh, because I only really ride old bikes, when I come to ride something more modern, I really appreciate the build quality, the performance. And what you're going to get as a package now when you buy a bike, I'm not going to talk today, today about like what this bike has got, all the data, because you can look it up anyway. You can, I can give you, you know, figures, but I want to tell you my experience riding this bike. First thing, it's, it's an easy bike to live with. I think this suits a, a slightly more younger person than me. It feels to ride a bit like a street fighter. If I would to say to you, if anyone's ridden a, a racehorse, you ride very short-legged on a racehorse. And this feels very much the same because the peg position is a little bit like a rear set. It's quite well back. So you'd send, you tend to sit quite straight upright. And the bars are very straight. So you're slightly, if I can describe how it is, it's a bit like this. Now, you're slightly forward. It's, it's a, a ride position that a lot of people would like because you can you know you can ride this thing for quite a long time without any discomfort but I don't think it's a bike that you want to ride too up although it's got pegs I don't think the ride position with a pillion would be fantastic it's a bike to enjoy on your own um, for one thing it hasn't got a grab rail now before I go too far about the bike the things that I found straight away that felt a bit uncomfortable the seat hasn't got a lot of padding but because of the style of the bike, it's, it's basically a bike that's been dressed to look very minimalistic. It's really featuring on the engine. This is what you're getting. This big 1200 engine with a lot of power. So a lot of it has been stripped down, a bit like a Street Fighter. So it's all performance. The power to weight ratio is in, quite incredible. There are a few settings on here, quite straightforward. You have a a rain mode, which we've been using, a road mode, and a sport mode. Now, to be honest with you, I found this engine quite incredible. We've spoken about this engine before with the Bobber and the Speedmaster. Triumph had done a brilliant job with this engine because with different um, 
specifications, camshaft uh, types that they use. The scrambler is different from this. This is punching out a lot of horsepower. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the bike, just working back through the bike from the front to the back. To come around to the front of the bike, the, the one thing you're gonna notice it's not been cleaned this bike on purpose because I just wanted to show you some of the things that this time of year you'll be up against if you're riding bikes of this type or any type really. I mentioned before about mud guards, really could do with a, a hugger extension on here because if you look at the radiator, anything that's on the road at the moment, we know we've got leaves and it, the banks are washed out, there's a lot of mud on the roads and the farms, the tractors and everything else. We get a lot of mud thrown up here at the radiator. There isn't any protection for the matrix and the rad. We could almost do with a grill cover here, really, and also an extension on the mud guard. Down here we have the collector box for the, um, for the cat, and you can see the amount of debris that's been thrown up there. Um, but this is, I'm not saying it's a, a bad bike at all, by any means, it's something that I would address if I was gonna ride this bike other than just in the summer you need to have a bit more protection for it. So we got a decent sized disc on here and Benbro brakes as you know. Um, the front end's very good, it's very tidy. Uh, I can understand now why plastic is used a lot more in uh, builder bikes because you haven't got the issues with shorting out electrics in the headlight and it's cheaper to produce. And you know, it's stylish. The analog clocks on here are really nice too. I quite like that style still. Again, with the back of the bike, um, we haven't cleaned it, as you can see. And the swing arm and up the back of the bike, there isn't a lot of protection. The mud and dirt will come off this back tire and it could also do a game with an aftermarket, but a standard, I feel, a better hugger in here. Something that's gonna, or back end tidy, like people like to call it will save a lot of this, because it will throw up. And I'll tell you what will happen, as I found that a lot of dirt will come off this tire, it will come up your back and the back of your crash helmet, as I found yesterday. Um, but this is the style of bikes, and like I say, for me, probably isn't quite my style of bike, but I think Triumph have done a fantastic job. The build quality is really good, um, but it's a style that, you know, is for everyone. There's something there for in the Triumph range. And I think for me, I probably wouldn't buy this bike, but if you want something that's gonna really go really well and uh, you can have a lot of fun with in the summer, great, because I think it's more of a summer bike. So yeah, that's that one. Now, we're gonna talk about the Scrambler in a moment, the 1200 Scrambler. We've got the XC here. It's on the bench on the other side here, and it's clean. Uh, I rode it back yesterday and we've been using it up in Surrey Hills and it was a bit dirty and I basically fell in love with that bike, but we'll talk about that now. So totally different bike, same engine, different specification. Horsepower on this is less, but it's a more usable horsepower. It's more torquey. We have a digital readout uh, instrumentation on here. There's a lot of settings on here I won't go into. But when you ride this, it's very, very comfortable. You've got more leg room, and Alex who rode both bikes did mention about the speed twin um, being a little bit cramped. This is a nice ride. This is similar to what you expect with all the big adventure bikes. I like the Scram because it's not your outblown adventure bike. It's something that I think this time of year, I think this is a great bike, you know, you ride this with quite high presence on the road. It's like driving a Land Rover. You sit up nice and high. Uh, it's a, a big bike, but it doesn't ride heavy. Its balance is fantastic. Um, I found yesterday coming through flooded roads and you know a lot of, obviously a lot of banks where it's washed out and leaves on the road. I didn't feel at all, you know, sort of worried that I was going to lose grip. Feedback is brilliant, you know, a really good, fun bike, good bike for eating up the miles too. Yeah, the, the Triumphs, you've got a big engine here, they're 1200cc, so you've got to remember that's twice the whole capacity of the older bikes really. So fuel consumption is around about the 50 plus to the gallon, which really considering the size of the engine and you compare it to what a lot of car engines are, it's not bad. 
But like anything, depends how you ride it. You ride it hard, you're going to get less mileage. But again, with this bike, um, we have a bash guard on, on, on the sump here. But again, it's exposed um, uh, radiator. But this one has got the guard on here, the stone guard. Now that's something really I feel the Speed Twin should have a standard. Because it will stop, you're going to get it. Stones will stick to the tyre, they come flying up, bang. Or so it hits the road and comes up. So that's really good. Trump done a brilliant job there. These new brush silencers and the guards are really nice. Um, when you sit on this, you know, there is no heat coming away from here. You just feel this slightly warm here, which is quite nice in the winter on your leg. But the seat, again, you see it's quite a, quite a slim seat, but it's quite comfortable. It's more comfortable than it is on the 1200. I think this sort of bike really is, is it's a bike that you've got to consider that it is a lot of money and you do need to look after these bikes. So if I think it's a bike that should take it out and try it. As I said to you before, um, if you haven't ridden anything modern and you've only been used to the old bikes, you jump on this, you will be in for a big surprise. These engines are incredible. You know, the, the power, all the modern bikes, but this big twin now, it's, it's a bike worth having a go on to experience that type of technology the, now, the technology now that is available in a motorcycle. It's quite incredible. We're going to talk about price and power. Now, I love this bike, no getting away from it, and I'd love to have one. Wouldn't be my only bike, as you know, I still keep my classics. But when we look at price and the power, this basically is, is twice the price of a Royal Enfield uh, uh, interceptor. So in a way, I know it's a scrambler version, but it's not dissimilar really, you know, the right position. You're paying a lot of money for this. You've got to really want this. And as we said, the build quality on the Royal Enfield is very good. And we did point out about plastic being used, but that's a common thing now, isn't it? You know, we've we said about the switch gear on the Royal Enfield being a little bit you know, it's plasticky, but it is something that is used now as a material more and more. I mean, and we spoke about the headlight on here. So you can't say Royal Enfield uses a lot of plastic. Triumph do as well. All the manufacturers do now. But I feel, to be honest with you, you've got a lot of power here. Do you need as much power as this, really? Um, and if I'm honest with you, I found the Royal Enfield uh, Continental and the interceptor had enough power as standard. If you want a bit more, and we've spoke about there are upgrades in big bore conversions, but I still feel really you could afford two bikes for the price of this. And if you had a partner who wanted to ride a bike, you could afford to have your interceptor and buy her a 350 classic. And you still have change in your pocket. Uh, so I do feel that these are very expensive bikes to buy, and hence why you really want to look after them during the winter. But I expect there's probably very few people that would use this all the time. But um, that's where, if I'm honest with you, like the Royal Enfield, the, the Himalayan, we haven't spoken about that bike, but that is a bike that is an off-road presence bike. It's got that durability about it, off-road, on-road. It would carry luggage. I feel in a way, if you're going to commute in the winter, you buy something like one of those. And that is like, what's it, four, just over 4,000, four and a half maybe now. So, yeah, I think these bikes are very nice, but I do feel they have a hefty price tag. So you've got to really be sure that you can afford it. If you can afford it, no problem. But I think it's catering for the more top end of the market. With people who've got a little bit more in their pocket to, to burn, really. Okay, we're going to do a start up on both these bikes. Now a scrambler, very quickly, um, not going to go into it, but switch gear. There is quite a lot on this bike because we've got, like I say, we've got different modes and we've got the onboard computer and it's got digital readout and you'll see in a moment. But the biggest thing with this one, we don't have a key to start it. We have a key here on the fob, which is purely just for our steering lock. So we can lock our steering. So we've just got a rubber boot cover there. Put a key in there and you turn it and lock it. But that's all that key does. Now we're just going to start it up now. One other thing I haven't mentioned to you about is I like these flip caps. 
And try for clever here, because you can be a nice sporty flip cap, if I can just show you. But inside is the locking cap. It is the same key, sorry, as the steering lock, which is a nice little feature. I do quite like that. Anyway, we're going to start the bike now. So the first thing we have to do, is I'll do it this way around, is hold this over the sensor. And this will pick up a reading. There we go. We've got a display. So we now go to the bottom position. Let all the relays set themselves up. We're in neutral. So all we do is just press the button and hold the clutch in. So that has a, a, a cold idle to it. So on our display, it's all digital here. It's running about 1500 thereabouts. Now when it's warm, it will cut back to 1000. It's fly by wire. I found riding this bike gear changing. You probably, normal ride here, you ride it to about 3,000 change gear because it is so torquey. The, the power is very linear with both models. I found this just accelerates so nicely, so smoothly. The other bike we're talking about at the moment has really got a lot more bite there. There's a lot more horsepower of it. But this ride position, as I said before, is very comfortable. It's a nice style. So that's really everything here that you need. I won't go into it too much, but it, it shows you uh, something like 55.9 miles per gallon. Uh, it, it gives you your range that's left. So there's quite a lot of stuff here. Obviously, the amount of fuel that you've got in your tank at the moment. And, you know, but yeah, a nice feature, nicely laid out. We'll leave this one running. Now we're going to go on to Speed Twin. Speed Twin is more, more basic. Switch gear is similar, but there's a lot less going on. We've got a mode down here which will, on the display, we can change, I'll show you in a moment. So starting on this one, we actually use a key on this, which most of us prefer. So the key goes in, turn it on, let it set itself, and all you do then is hold the clutch in. We're in neutral, always check to make sure you're in neutral, and just hit the button. This again will run faster until it's warmed up. Now straight away you can hear the exhaust notes different. It's quite, quite raspy. Now if you look at the mode now, at the moment, we're in a road mode. By me changing this button, it will change it into sport mode. Then we go back to rain mode. That's nice and straightforward. I find it's easier when you ride along the road and you've got your glove on. You don't want all this high tech stuff, for me anyway. I, I don't take it on board as easy as a lot of younger people do. I just want something that I can see with a press straight away, rain, road or sport. This in, um, in the road mode, you open it up, it, it really does go. Sport mode is unbelievable. We just get a little blip. Characteristics of Triumphs is you get that whistle. It's a real tightness of the engine. They're so well designed now. I mean, every these days with CNC machinery, it's, it's so well built. So that's the difference in sound between the 1200 speed twin against the Scrambler 1200. It's a lower tone. But yeah, riding these, it, it's... I like the sound of a, a single or a twin, or a triple. I'm not so... Fours are nice, but a bit more buzzy. A big single, bit a twin, it's a lovely sound. I mean, that's, I think, why a lot of people go for these. They love that raw power sound you get from these bikes. But just flip this one again. And so you've got two bikes here that are very different, but both share the same engine, but with different performance. So yeah, what, what's a, a nice pair of bikes? Uh, there's, there's something, and it's not just Triumph, and a lot of man, manufacturers do this now. What we don't see on a bike 
so often is a main stand. Um, people say, why do you need it? You've got a side stand. But it's nice to have that when you're doing the maintenance, if you're lubricating the back wheel. Also, sometimes, you know, if you're doing a trip somewhere and you have to go on the Euro Tunnel or go on a ferry, it's nice to actually put the bike on the stand, you know, if it's on the side stand. I know you should leave it in gear, we know that, but sometimes terrain isn't that good and the movement on a, something that's moving, especially on a boat. I think having the main stand would be quite nice, really. So, And to see it as a standard item, not as an extra. Now, I'll tell you, I'm not going to talk any more about the bikes now here. I'm going to talk more about the experience yesterday we had. Alex and myself rode these two bikes up in Surrey Hills. It wasn't the best of weather yesterday because we had so much rain the night before. So you imagine the roads are washed out, a lot of surface standing water. I rode, I rode the um, Speed Twin first. I rode it up to Alex and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I say, it feels a, bit, a little bit more like you're riding a racehorse, but I thoroughly enjoyed what I was getting from this bike. These bikes, they're very well built. Triumph, you've done a brilliant job and the build quality is exceptional. Um, you know, as much as I say about the modern things, I do like these type of bikes. Uh, I still like analog clocks, whereas I do find the digital one, it will warm on me, but because I find things like this are more easy to understand and a little bit less in the switch gear, so I think it's more straightforward, it suits me. But I, I can't praise this enough. I rode this and we were doing some quite quick and tricky bits to get the camera shots for you. And at no time did I feel this is going to be an issue or felt uncomfortable, unconfident. You know, it gave me good feedback. It's, it, there's a lot of weight down here, but it doesn't ride heavy. It's, it's surprisingly light in, the, in its maneuverability when you're riding it. So that was brilliant. Um, talk about the Scrambler. Now, Alex rode with um, his friend. So Alex let um, his friend Jay, Jason, ride the, uh, him, so your bike now you've got is Tenere. the Tenere. He's got the Yamaha Tenere. So they've done a comparison with the Tenere, which is a very much an off-road bike, really. And this is more like, it does both. But this done exceptionally well, because you have a mode on here, off-road mode, you can change all your setup for it. And you've got traction control and the rest of it. So this is a very capable bike of being on-road and off-road. Like I say, Triumphs build a bike that is to be used, to be used hard. These will do it. There's no getting away from it. And not a bike that you just take out for the weekend. They are proper work bikes. And I think that's where sometimes we miss the point. A bike you know, like, like this, you pay a lot of money for, but you will, get, you will get the use out of it. And you should use it for what it's intended. And like I say, yes, that I was riding this through flooded roads coming back from Catrum. And, um, you know, I was riding past the reservoir and the road was flooded. And it wasn't deep, deep water, but I didn't at any time feel, oh, I can't go through here. And mud on the roads and the leaves and it's slippery. Such a nice bike to ride and such confidence bu um, building as well. You know, so there's a lot of power there, but it's all down to what you do here. So don't be intimidated by it. You know, you can ride it carefully and sensibly. But balance is brilliant. No, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, yeah, Triumph, I think, thanks Triumph, I think you've done a brilliant job with these two machines. And I know the whole range that you, you make will suit someone. And uh, this engine, for me, is the one I think you've done so well in the design, in the performance, the way that you can map it with different cams and set up for different bikes in your range. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly sold it to me that if I was going to buy something like this, I think this would be the one I would go for.